In Jetpack Compose, you write declarative code that describes how data should be displayed as UI. But how does Compose perform that transformation? In this episode, we'll discuss three phases that play a role in this, and how having a mental model of these phases will help you reason about your app's design implementation. So Compose transforms data into UI. The three phases in this process are composition, layout, and drawing, or what to show, where to place it, and how to render it. During the composition phase, the Compose runtime executes your composable functions. It outputs a tree data structure that represents your UI. This UI tree consists of layout nodes. Together, these layout nodes hold all the information needed to complete the next phases. Then, during the layout phase, each element in the tree measures its children, if any, and places them in the available 2D space. Finally, in the drawing phase, each node in the tree draws its pixels on the screen. Let's take a closer look at these phases. For that, we'll only focus on the bottom part of the screen, where you see the author of the article, the publication date, and the reading time. During the composition phase, we transformed composable functions into a UI tree. As we're looking only at the author element, we can zoom in on a subsection of our code and our UI tree. In this case, each composable function in our code maps to a single layout node in the UI tree. This is a pretty simple example, but your composables can contain logic and control flow, producing a different tree given different states. When we move to the layout phase, we use this UI tree as input. The collection of layout nodes contain all the information needed to eventually decide on each node's size and location in 2D space. During the layout phase, the tree is traversed using the following three-step algorithm. First, a node measures its children, if any, and then, based on those measurements, it decides on its own size, and finally, it places its children relative to its own position. At the end of the phase, each layout node will have an assigned width and height and an XY coordinate of where it should be drawn. So for our composable, this would work as follows. We start with the root node, the row. It will start with step one, measuring its children. We continue to the image. The image doesn't have any children, so it can directly continue to the second step. It decides its own size. Step three can also be skipped for the image as it has no children. Now the row measures its next child, the column. The column starts again with step one, measuring its children. The text does not have any children, so it only needs to decide its own size. The column measures its second child, and this text also directly decides its own size. Now the column knows the two measurements of its children. It uses those measurements to decide its own size, using the maximum child width and the sum of the height of its children. Then it places its children relative to itself, putting them beneath each other vertically. And finally, the row now has all the information it needs from its children to decide its own size and where its children should be placed. One key takeaway here is that we visited each node only once. With a single pass through the UI tree, we were able to measure and place all the nodes. This is great for performance. When the number of nodes in the tree increases, the time spent traversing it increases in a linear fashion. In contrast, if we were to visit each node multiple times, the traversal time would increase exponentially. Now that we know the sizes and XY coordinates of all of our layout nodes, we can continue to the draw phase. The tree is traversed again from top to bottom and each node draws itself on the screen in turn. So in our case, first the row will draw any content it might have, such as a background color. Then the image will draw itself, then the column, and then the first and the second text. Great, we've seen how the three phases are executed for our composable, but we took some shortcuts. If we go back to the composition phase, we said we execute the code and build the UI tree. But looking closer at the code, we can see that it actually uses modifiers to change the look and feel of some of our composables. In our UI tree, we can visualize these as wrapper nodes for our layout nodes. When we chain multiple modifiers, each modifier node wraps the rest of the chain and the layout node within. For example, when we chain a clip and a size modifier, the clip modifier node wraps the size modifier node, which then wraps the image layout node. 
In the layout phase, the algorithm we use to walk the tree stays the same, but each modifier node is visited as well. This way, a modifier can change the size requirements and placement of the modifier or layout node that it wraps. In our case, the size modifier decides on the size, and thereby overrides the image's default size. The padding modifiers increase their wrapped node size and place them accordingly in the available space. The column's content will be inset by 8dp, and the text will be 4dp higher and its content placed to add that space at the top. The clip modifier affects the drawing phase, as it doesn't change the size or placement of its wrapped nodes. It only affects how the content is being drawn. Specifically, it creates a mask that the image will then draw its content in. Now, interestingly, if we would look at the implementation of our image composable, we can actually see that it itself consists of a chain of modifiers wrapping a single layout node. Similarly, a text composable is implemented with a chain of modifiers wrapping a layout node as well. And finally, the implementations of our row and column are simply layout nodes that describe how to lay out their children. Now we'll get back to this in a later episode, but for now it's good to think about a modifier as wrapping a single modifier or layout node, while a layout node can lay out multiple child nodes. So, with this mental model, you now have a better understanding of how the different phases in Compose work. In the next episode, we'll dive a bit deeper into the layout phase and learn to reason about how exactly layouts and modifiers influence the measurement and placement of their children. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more Android developer content.